Laura Hildebrandt's book, Unbroken, Chapter 36, Part 2. Of the post-war stories of the men who ran the camps in which Louis had lived, the saddest was that of Yuiko Kondo, the Omori private who risked everything to protect the POWs and had probably saved several prisoners' lives. Just after the war's end was announced, Kano came upon a group of drunken guards stumbling toward the barracks, swords drawn, determined to hack some captured B-29 men to death. Kano and another man planted themselves on the guards' path, and after a brief scuffle, stopped them. Kano was a hero, but when the Americans came to liberate the camp, two of them tried to rip the insignia off his uniform. Bob Martindale stepped in and gave the Americans a furious dressing down. Fearing that Kano might be mistakenly accused of war crimes, Martindale and several other POW officers wrote a letter of commendation for him before they went home. It did no good. Kano was arrested and jailed as a suspected war criminal. Why he was fingered remains unclear. He was mentioned in many POW affidavits, and in every one was lauded for his kindness. Perhaps the explanation was that his last name was similar to those of two vicious men, Titsoturu Kato, an Omori, Omori official who had said to kick the POW nearly to death, and Hiroko Kono, the bird's acolyte at Nuotsu. Months passed, and Kano languished in prison, frightened and humiliated. He was neither charged nor questioned. He wrote a plaintive letter asking authorities to investigate him so his name could be cleared. Cross my heart, he wrote, I have done anything wrong. In the winter of 1946, Kano was finally cleared, and MacArthur ordered his release. Kano moved to Yokohama and worked for an import-export business. He missed his POW friends, but for years he didn't try to contact them. I thought I should refrain from wanting them, from writing them, he wrote Martindale in 1955, as my letter might make... Uh, make them to remind them of hard days in Amori, which I am sure they would like to forget. Sometime later, he died of cancer. Always write those letters, because you never know you die of cancer. In the mountain village where he was known at Suburu Ohato, Watanabe waited out a bitter winter, the bird. The visit from the policeman shook him. He was shook. After the policeman left, the farmer's wife eyed Watanabe with what seemed to be recognition. When night fell, Watanabe lay awake, mulling capture and execution. When summer came, Watanabe was asked to attend the farmer's son as he toured the country, selling leather straps. The tours would take him through major cities where Watanabe was surely being sought, but he was living on the good graces of the farmer and he had to accept. Watanabe donned glasses to obscure his features and headed off, filled with trepidation. They went to the busy port cities of Akita and Niagata, no one gave Watanabe a second look. As his fear of being discovered eased, he began enjoying himself. The conversation in the cities was dominated by the war, and everyone had an opinion about the conduct of Japanese soldiers, especially those accused of war crimes. People talked of how the hunt for suspected war criminals was being conducted. Watanabe listened intently. Being out in society made him see his long to see his family. He thought of how his mother would now be in Tokyo on, his, on her regular summer visits to her sister's home. <clears throat> the yearning was overpowering. Watanabe took out the fortune-telling cards that his little sister had given him and dealt himself a hand. The cards told him that he went, if he went to his family, he'd be safe. On a sweltering day at the height of the summer in 1946, he boarded a train for Tokyo. His timing couldn't have been worse. The winter's push to find Watanabe had yielded no clues, and the police were again doubling their efforts. A newly discovered photograph of Watanabe had been copied and distributed, along with a report that described him as a man known to have persuasions. Excuse me, known to have perversion, perversion, perversions. Known to have perversions. Who might be found wherever there are loose women. Since Japanese citizens were required to register change of address, police were ordered to bore over registries in search of men traveling alone. They were instructed to monitor transactions at ration boards and prowl post offices, trains and bus stations, taxi stands, ferry landings, mines, black market outlets, dive hotels, and lodging houses, and any business that might attract a man fluent in French. Probably inspired by the clue that Watanabe might have committed suicide, Police moved to investigate all unnatural and unusual deaths since November 1945, especially those in which the deceased person was unidentified. As a homesick Watanabe journeyed out of hiding and into Tokyo, he was walking into a manhunt. Shizuku Watanabe was sitting in Michiko's house with two of her other children 
when the front door swung open, and in walked Matsuhiro, the bird. The room felt silent as the startled family members looked at Matsuhiro and then at one another. Matsuhiro, emotionally overwhelmed and dizzy from the midday heat, wavered, afraid he would faint. Michukiko came in and saw her brother. The family broke out into celebration. For two hours, Mutsuhiro sat with his family, sipping drinks and listening to them tell of being arrested, questioned, followed, and searched. He said nothing of where he'd been, believing that his family would fare better if they didn't know. As time passed, the family members grew anxious, afraid that detectives would catch him. They'd been there just two days previously. At two o'clock, Shizuku warned Mutsuhiro that this was the time of day when detectives usually came to search. Mutsuhiro reassured them that the playing cards had told them that all would be well. They were shuffling outside. The detectives had arrived. The Watanabe sprang up. Someone tossed Mutsuhiro's belongings into a closet. Someone else snatched up the cups and dumped them in the sink. Mutsuhiro raced into a tea room and shut the door. Behind him, he heard footfalls as the group of detectives entered the room that he had just left. He heard them questioning his mother and sister, telling them if they caught Mutsuhiro, he'd be treated well. The detectives were just feet away on the other side of the door, his heart racing. Mutsuhiro tried to decide whether to run or to conceal himself here. The room was tiny, scattered with pillows, but there was a closet. Ever so slowly, he in inched over to the closet sliding door. I hope that catches this guy. He inched over to the closet sliding door and squeezed inside. He decided not to close the door, fearing that it would make noise. He stood there, a hand clasped over his mouth, to smolder the sound of his breathing. The door opened. A detective looked in. You have plenty of room, he said to the family. There was a pause as he looked about. If the detective turned his eyes toward the closet, he'd see Mutsuhiro. It is tidy, the detective said. The door closed. The detectives left. Mutsuhiro had wished to stay overnight, but the close call changed his mind. He told his mother that he tried to see her again in two years. Then he left, walking back. He wrote, into the lonesome world. And once again, sociopath thinking they're the victim. Watanabe returned to the village. The farmer's son, unable to make go of his leather strap sales, opened a coffee shop in the village. Watanabe became his waiter. The farmer approached Watanabe with a proposition. Arranged marriage was still common in Japan, and the farmer had found a match for him. Watanabe was tempted. He was lonely and unhappy and liked the idea of marrying, but marriage, while in his predicament, seemed impossible. He said no. The young woman eventually came to him. When the farmer's son felt ill, she paid him a visit, and Watanabe, curious, went into the sick room to see her. He raised the subject of the novel that the farmer's son was reading, thinking that he wrote, If she liked books, she must understand the mind and hardship of human life. In his notes about the meeting, he didn't say if she possessed that understanding, but he did seem to like her and thought she would be a good housekeeper. Part of him seemed to want to fall for her, and he believed that love could save my daily life. The woman was taken with the attractive waiter and began lingering in the coffee shop to be near him. He kept his identity secret from her. She began telling her parents about him in hopes of winning their blessing for a wedding. After brooding on her, Watanabe decided that he had to end the relationship. All he told her was that he had a burden which would make her unhappy. With that, he broke with the tenuous existence that he had created in the village. He quit his job and left. He wandered onto a stretch of Nagunu grassland along the Chikuma River and took a job as a cowherd. His inability to control the willful animals, animals exasperated him. He was despondent. At sunset, he lifted his eyes to the majestic Asana volcano, watching a ribbon of smoke unspooling from her upper reaches, the cattle grazing below. In Japan's Okochibiu Mountains stands the holy peak of Mitsusami, its sides fleeced its forest, its summit or or ornamented with its ancient shrine. In the fall of 1946, Two bodies were found amid the hollows and spines of the mountain, a pistol lying with them. One was a man, the other a woman. No one knew who they were. The police went to Shazuku Wataponami and asked her and her family to accompany them to the mountain. The Watanabes were driving up to Mitsumu and, with the help of guides, taken to the bodies. Shizuku looked down at the lifeless form of the young man. Japanese newspapers ran the sensational story. Matsutsu Watanabe, the bird one of Japan's most wanted men, was dead. He and a woman, probably a lover, had killed themselves. What an asshole. Um, <clears throat> that was um, Laura Hildebrand's book, Unbroken, Chapter 36. Um, uh, it's all about Louis Zamperini. That was uh, 
particular chapter was all about the guard, the POW prisoner of war camp guard, the bird, the Japanese guard, the bird, who uh, tortured Louis amongst many other prisoners, and he was never caught and never tried for his crimes. Uh, my name is Gregory Brandt. Um, click the thumbs up button and uh, hit the subscribe button. I'm trying to grow this channel. Um, this book's just about finished. If you have any suggestions for some another book for me to read, go ahead and put it in the comments below and uh, send this to uh, one person. Tell them one. Tell one person about this channel that you like. Thanks.